Welcome to the Once Upon an Island podcast. I'm your host, Wesley. And of course, I am joined by my lovely co-host, Mary. And this is our ninth season, Mary, podcasting live. No way. I know. We've done a bunch of deep dives and past seasons in between, but since 39, we've been podcasting the show live. Yeah, we're on nine seasons. And I want to say, I only check like once a season. Like I, I look on YouTube, see what other channels, but we are the second most listened to Survivor podcast on YouTube. I don't know if I've ever said that on the show before. I debated telling everybody because then I'm like, don't want to look like, you know, I don't want to look prideful or anything, but I was like, oh, I thought that was pretty cool. And it's been like that since 41. So that is pretty cool. I hope we're number two in the charts and number one in your hearts. When I thought <laughs> of that line, I was like, all right, sounds good. I'll say that. So anyways, uh, Survivor 47, it starts on the 18th in two weeks. They were cutting it close on this cast announcement. Mm-hmm. Cutting it close. Today is the day we are recording this mere hours after the cast announcement. We will answer your guys' questions. We'll tell you everything we know for a fact that's happening with 47 and future seasons because we got some information on that. And what else? Oh, yeah, we'll go through the cast. I said I said that, bro. Rebecca is going to be doing our Wednesday recap podcast with me this season like we did in 46. Um, and Mary's going to be doing winter analysis just the way the schedule works out. But I liked how it worked last season. And maybe in 40... Eight. We'll go back to Mary doing Wednesday, Rebecca doing Thursday. Uh, also, a couple things on Patreon. These are big. We will have a fantasy pool for this season, Mary. Yes. Like we did last season and Good. the season before, but this time it's for real. There's a prize. What? You have to be a paid patron to sign up, but whoever wins, and I mean whoever gets first place. So let's say I get first place I, that doesn't count so whoever gets second place like mm-hmm. I got first place last season at the very end Kenzie pulled out the win and pulled out the win for me as well but anyways whoever gets first place or gets second place if somehow I win again which I doubt uh, will get to pick any story video for me to make you get all the power you pick whoever you want what if I win second then whoever <laughs> wins third I'm just and if Rebecca gets third I'm then whoever kidding. wins fourth whoever's not me Mary or Rebecca obviously <laughs> <laughs> Mary, are you even on? Why even try? Are you even a paid patron on the Patreon, no. Mary? Okay, <laughs> that would be weird. Like my bank account's paying me to just give Patreon money. Like it's just weird. All right, Mary, right. get out of here with Sorry. your nonsense. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So I just want to throw out there uh, that will I will put a link in the description for that post to link to the fancy game. But again, you have to be a paid patron to sign up. Any tier will do. It doesn't matter. And yeah, you win. You pick what I make. So. I, you know, <laughs> this has got to be the your best shot at single handedly. Every other time it's picking story videos to vote. Complete power, complete power by one person. I don't know if that's wise. Oh, well, it's too late. I've already <laughs> said it. It's on the podcast. All right. So uh, the other thing is we are now on Patreon voting for which season I should cover next after one world right now. I'm making videos about one world, but there's like a six way tie between like Dave versus Goliath. Kagayan, San Juan del Sur, Co Wrong, Millennials vs. Gen X, and I think like one or two other seasons. So there's some good ones in there. It's a good one. That's on Patreon as well. All right. So uh, links in the description for everything I talk about, but I think that's the most important stuff that's going to be happening this season. We'll have a new picture of us in new buffs when the new buffs finally arrive. Right. I wish they would. Why do they have to wait for a cast announcement to sell those? I want to buy. Because something would be spoiled. Oh, no. The oh, colors no. of the tribes. Oh, no. <laughs> we know they're what? Red, green, and blue or it's It's orange, either red, purple, green, blue or, or red, whatever. yellow, blue. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. It's the odd-numbered season, so they got to do those colors. God right. forbid we do anything new around here. Speaking of which, three tribes, 26 days. Woo-hoo. What? No way. It's so dangerous to just be in three tribes, as Jeff says, which is why they keep doing it, I think. You know what would be really so dangerous? dangerous? You know what would be dangerous, Mary? Four tribes. Wow. Wouldn't that be of dangerous? Like four players? Of five players. You do 20 players. Mm, interesting. Wouldn't that be actually be more dangerous than three tribes of 18 when everybody knows it's going to happen? Sure. Episode one, we got a journey. What? Everyone's got to play dumb. <laughs> but you never know. You might get a Jelinski. You might. It's just don't know when you're getting a Jelinski. Last season was good, by the way. I'm over here dogging on it, but last season was good. And it shows in the rankings, which yes. I posted on YouTube recently that you guys all thousands of people voted on yeah 46 i think got the best ranking out of all the new era seasons from really? our call yep huh. i yep. mean i'm not surprised but yeah i said it when last season when you and i and uh rebecca we ranked the new era seasons and mm-hmm. I, said, I think 46 is gonna be the best you were right and you guys did doubt usually me. are you pressed x for doubt i did so all right <laughs> 
Uh, there's not too much to talk about in terms of twists and stuff. There's like no rumors, nothing out there. Usually inside survivor.com has rumors and stuff. There's nothing. They don't even have the whole cast for 48. Like they, and I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying like whoever leaks information to them, has been fired or is no longer leaking information. <laughs> you know, Je- Jeff Probst had them dealt with properly. Uh, we're not going to have any returnees till survivor 50 as of now. But the rumor on the street, and this is just a rumor. Please do not take this as a fact. Rumor has it. Rumor has it that CBS said it will be a year-long celebration for Survivor 50, whatever that means. But the Mm. rumor is, and I think this is just speculation, is that 49 might be like a half returnee, half newbie season Mm. leading up into 50. So like the people that didn't make the cut for 50, which sounds bad, but like 50 is going to be like a legend season, I'm sure. Right. Covering or the an era season, like covering every era, you know, get Charlie on there so you can talk about Taylor Swift eras to her. Uh, Mary rolled her eyes, but like you know, they would do it too. Mm-hmm. They would do like a battle of the eras or something like that for 50, but 49 might be like a fans versus favorites kind of deal. I would ideally actually hope for Blood versus Water. <laughs> that would be good. Blood versus Water 3. Mm-hmm. And that and your 49 would be all your new era all stars on the returnee tribe. Yeah. And then their loved ones on the air tribe. That's I th- and then 50. We can have proper legends like across all seasons. We don't mm-hmm. feel like we're entangled and tied down to having to only put new era people. on right. there. So, well, that's I mean, that's good news, though, because it does mean they got a lot of options for 50. I'm assuming if these are like the backup people that they're using before. I feel like it would be freed up. They, yeah, they'd be freed up to do 50 how they want if they put some returnees on 49 like that because mm-hmm. they haven't done any returnees since 40. And even that was just winners. So they haven't done returnees since 38 but that was just four people so they haven't right. done a full returning season since 34 game changers mm-hmm. when you know they had a couple winners on there that was a massive a season but i'm just saying like it's been a long time there's a lot of people have been stacked up i feel like in my opinion especially dave versus goliath they have gone the longest i cannot believe i cannot believe dave versus goliath aired in 2018 it does not feel like it's that long really? ago <laughs> yes Mary remembers. We watched it live. There's so many things that make me feel old now. So yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw people from Edge of Extinction, the season were like 23 when it they filmed it. And now they're 30. And I'm like, has it been that long? And I looked and I'm like, nope, it's been that long. <laughs> it's like, what the heck's going on around here? So pretty crazy. Uh, another thing I mentioned this in our we did a podcast during the summer. Don't worry if you missed it. Uh, we're kind of reco- we're going to go over all the things that we talked about there anyways about 47 but if you go on google earth unless they've updated it again and you go to mana island in fiji where all the survivor challenges take place you can go on google earth and it's dated may 31st june 1st and you could see like survivor challenges Mm -hmm. uh set up for i believe 47 or 48 in fact mary just yesterday two days ago before we recorded this uh i saw on survivor reddit the like someone posted a picture of the survivor 48 tribal Council, which I know is not 47. We're here talking about 47. Okay. It was very colorful, very goofy looking. Very but somebody goofy. had snuck into the tribal council set. Gotcha. And took a picture. Wow. Yep. I don't know if it was during the season, but man, did it not look tore down. So <laughs> it was taken from TikTok. I what saw do the you original. Mean by goofy? I like, saw the original TikToks. I'm like, what's the source of this image? Goofy. I mean, just the design and colors. Like, it was, I don't know. No, the, 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 sorry, the actual like seating and where Jeff it like that's all normal. Just the background stuff. When okay. I say goofy, sorry, it's not like you're not getting into okay. an actual clown show. I'm just imagining, yeah, like Disneyland on an no, island. No, sorry, somewhere. I might have hyped up too much. <laughs> if you look up Survivor 48 Tribal Council set leaked or something like that, I'm sure you'll find an image. It was some guy on TikTok posted images of his trip there, and he snuck onto the set. So, anyways, all right. So I think we talked about everything important. Season and winner rankings are on YouTube. Thank you all for voting on those. Thousands of you voted. Um, uh, and so I love though, Mary, how there are some comments where people are blaming me for the rankings. They're like, why would you rank this person there? I'm like, <laughs> in the very first 10 seconds of this video, I explained that you all picked <laughs> the rankings. <laughs> no, Man, you have can't all be bothered, the power. Can't nope. be bothered to listen to the first 10 seconds. Gotta skip the number two and start complaining. <laughs> That's my fault. All right. Anyways, let's get into the cast assessment. Okay. Now, I must say, Mary, before we get in the cast assessment, we're going to go alphabetically by last name. Mm -hmm. For those listening, I will put images up of the person we are talking about for those Mm -hmm. who are on YouTube. I thank you for listening on YouTube. It makes way more money than Spotify, which makes zero dollars. Spotify gives me nothing. So that's why it goes on there last. Anyways, point being is that uh, I watched. They have you on Survivor CBS's YouTube channel. I watched their. I started to watch the video. It's like meet the new castaways. Mm -hmm. And I watched a couple of them. 
And I was like, oof, I should not watch these. I feel tainted already. Right. By people's personalities unedited by Mm -hmm. the show. Good and bad. Right. So (laughs) I know some super fans watch those. I tried to avoid them and I went and watched this year. I was like, ooh, this is why I try to avoid it because I feel like I'm going to come into the season with preconceived notions. I don't want that. Because it taints what I, who I think will be who I think the winner is. I think mm. it taints my thoughts on the winner at it. Yeah. If I'm thinking back to stuff that's, you know, not, preseason stuff that's right. not at all part of the story. Right. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. I have not seen any of that. So Don't. I am untainted. <laughs> it will taint you good or bad on certain people. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Somebody will look it up out of curiosity. I said that, but it's just like, yeah. Um. Anyway, so let's go through this. We already I'm going to lay it out. I don't want to hammer this the whole time okay. on the cast. Mm-hmm. We talked about it during summer. So let's get this out of the way now. There are eight players from the Northeast. Embarrassing, insulting, in my opinion. And still no one from West Virginia, Alaska, North Dakota, or New Mexico. Again, what the heck? It's been 47 seasons. How we never had a, a single player who was living in any of these states when they played Survivor. Insanity. True. Insanity. Eight players from the Northeast this season. Only two players over 40, only one over 50. Again, we had mm-hmm. nine people from Rhode Island. Like, mm-hmm. what gives? So, mm-hmm. I got my complaining out of the way. Did you? Are I'm you gonna sure? no. I'm serious. Like, I I'm gonna try I'm to gonna not hold complain you to throughout it. the cast assessment. Okay. Just putting that in there now. These are the facts. Prepare your booties. I have a lot of people from the Northeast. Is it unfair? Yes. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's go alphabetically, Mary. Who's our first player? First, we have Teeny, age 24, from Manahawk in New Jersey, freelance writer. One out of eight. Freelance writer. Okay. So, Teeny, what interesting things? Mary did all the notes, and I'm following along. Mary did all the notes. What are the interesting things from Teeny's profile? So, interesting things that I wrote down. Other people might find different interesting things. Um, But basically, I think it's interesting that she loves the game so much that she wore the a buff every day for high school. And then she likes Nerd. <laughs> she I likes would never do that to force. She forced her restaurant coworkers to vote each other out. I don't know what that means. Is that like, like you, you get, get voted out and then you get fired? Yeah. But basically very, very uh, much a survivor nerd ecstatic. Yeah. Excited to be here. Kind of a, a stereotype we've been seeing a lot lately, but you mm-hmm. know, still could be fun. Could be interesting. Uh, the other thing I thought was interesting was that, uh, at the very end, and I'm quoting, I've also overstayed my welcome as the pesky fan asking for players for photos. Mary knocked her microphone yep, there for I a second. She just punched it right in the mouth. I did. I was so uh, excited. So what Tini's saying is that they, I, so <clears throat> she has met a bunch of players. I, by the way, pronouns here, like I know some they people are young. I don't know what some of these people's yeah, pronouns are. And I don't. Them frankly keep up with that so mm-hmm. if it if i'm wrong i will learn i'm just letting you know like i this is one i like last season or two seasons ago i forgot people got on to me i'm like i'm learning all right they don't say it how am i supposed to know anyways so teeny said they overstayed their welcome with players meaning that they've met a bunch of players and they just bothered them for photos right and i only make a note of that because like that's not necessarily something to be proud of if you're gonna do that in this game where you just know like you're annoying people sure that's never a great sign but it also is just like showing their super fan side so when i watched troy zan go absolutely nuts in one world after winning immunity and telling all the girls this is his island Mm -hmm. (laughs) come at him that's Mm -hmm. right (laughs) all that i'm like oof, that's what i would have done so (laughs) who am i to say about (laughs) well it's one thing (laughs) one thing to know and another thing to do i would man i don't know like sometimes uh, I like I, it's easier to be on the podcast Monday morning quarterbacking it yes. as they call it yeah, Arm, yeah armchair quarterback armchair you know coaching over mm-hmm. here than to be on the island so yes aware but at 24 are you mature enough to not do it so I feel like some age comes into factor when it comes to like being oh, annoying yeah. but also knowing how to like contain it or like not mm-hmm. do it so. yeah anyways all right who's next next is Rome uh, age 30 from Corvallis. I don't know. Mm. But currently resides in Phoenix. Sorry. Uh, oh, Oregon. Yeah, yes. Is the hometown. Yeah. Uh, he's an esports commentator. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Have we ever had an esports commentator before? I think it's where we talked about when we talked, when we did this during the summer on the rumored cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like three different podcasters or announcers or basically people who are doing what we're doing right now. 
on the season. Okay. Uh, and this is one of them, I believe, oh. because we have we're gonna have two other actual straight up podcasters on this gotcha. cast, and then Rome is our esports commentator, which is not podcasting, right? But, but that your job is talking, similar in a yeah. microphone, which is, I mean, it's that can be a good skill to have, I guess, but it, not really, especially if just commentating on sports. Like all that's required is the knowledge of the sports. It's not necessarily are you good with talking people talking. Mm-hmm. Are you good with talking people? I Clearly, s- I am not good so at talking. I have a question about your notes, Mary. Yes. Are you sure these are correct? We have like three or four people in a row who say, who say their inspiration is their mom. Is that correct? Literally every person in this cast, their inspiration is their mom, which is why I took a note of it. Except for, I think there's two or maybe three people. Yeah. But it's, literally every person. Like they, Do they all like inspire? To well, that's that what I was, so, so here's my uh, the thought of the secret twist for this season. They you're all, are you're all put playing. Out their mom? No, you're all oh. playing against your mom. Yeah, it's like a secret blood versus <laughs> secret mom. blood versus. Man, that would be an excellent <laughs> season. Like, uh, no, it was just weird. Like, I know moms are usually the inspiration, and usually it's like a big percentage of the inspiration. But literally, yeah. every pre- person except for like, I think, I, I think it's just two. I'll have to go back and look. Yeah, so their mom is their inspiration. How long so. would a twist like that even last? Like, <laughs> there's know. 20 people on a season, right, or 18 people, mm-hmm. and. Every person has a loved one on the island, but Jeff doesn't tell anyone yeah. that this is the twist of the season. So everyone thinks that their loved one is a secret, that they're the only one with a loved one there. But as it turns out, all 18 people have a loved one there. That'd be crazy. There'll secret be like blood versus water three. A mix between this and that show, like who's your famous relative or whatever. You know that show? It's no, fairly new. I have no idea. It's a bunch of contestants who are together in a house or someplace and they have to figure Big out brother? who has a secret celebrity relative. Wow. Oh. No, I've never heard of this. I, I've only saw a trailer. You were more into the loop than I was. Yeah, who knew? That's usually not how it occurs when I tell Mary things. She's like, mm, why would I know this? Anyway, so, This is the first time I think you've told me something. I'm like, why would oh, I know this? I'm glad this? I finally gave you something ha, that you ha, didn't know. Ha, ha. Well, I saw your notes and I noticed that Rome, uh, I believe it's how you say his name. By the way, we apologize. We say his name wrong. Again, I tried not to watch the videos because I was being tainted by how people were talking about themselves. So I didn't catch how everyone said their name. Rome, I assume, mm-hmm. uh, said, I want to be the next host survivor when Jeff retires. Now, my top concern reading this, if being legit, is that Rome is going to be a suck up to oh, production. Yeah. yeah. And just could tell them whatever they want to hear. Well, that's not going to be new. I mean, a bunch of people <laughs> are suck ups. <laughs> like, if you really want to be Jeff Probst, you're not going to be a suck Nine up, seasons in into podcasting, I guess. Uh, yeah. Expect us to go. What else is new around here? <laughs> suck up to production. Oh, bro. The other thing it didn't I thought, used to be like that. The other thing that I thought was interesting about Rome is when he was asked why he would be the sole survival, he said, I'm going to play my idols. So, you know, I think that was just like a throwback to last season when literally no one played their idols. And maybe I'm wrong, but I just thought it was funny. Like the very first thing he says, I'm going to play my idols. Well, here's Therefore, the thing. I'll be the sole I, survivor. <laughs> I don't think this cast saw five people in a row not play their idol oh. or four people in a row, whatever it was. I'm 46 and I play their idol. I made a whole video about that too. Like the no playing idols. And I don't remember. It was four or five. I want to say four people in a row. I think it was five people in the season, four people in a row. That's right. Yeah. Didn't play their idols 46. I don't think they saw that. They went out while still airing. No, you're right. For my recollection. I just read it and you know, like immediately thought about last season. So no, it's not a bad thought. Not a bad thought at all. And if you watch the preview for this season, uh, that was made while before the season finished airing. I mean, for the, sorry, for the season finished filming, therefore, there should be no spoilers in the 47 preview like there was in the 46 preview, which spoiled the final five. Oh, yeah. If you watch the 46 preview, it literally has a slow-mo shot of the final five's legs. And Kenzie has tattoos, so it spoiled that she was in the final five. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So anyways, you know, those little spoilers the Spyro likes to put in their own stuff is a, is a good help, I would say, if you're going to be doing your fantasy team. True. for our league so True. look out for I, like i i look for people who are prominent that's what i got that's why i picked bonu oh gosh that's why i picked <laughs> bonu and kenzie because i'm like people who are pro- seem prominent in survivors advertising and stuff i'm like it's probably yeah new. probably somebody's making the merge at least good indication that they mm. might be around or just have a big personality because i i don't remember but big i'm just personalities get screen time he, yeah that's true but also sometimes big personalities go quickly this but. is true look at jelinski yeah that's what i was thinking yeah so anyways, uh, nobody so far I'm thinking about putting on my fancy team. No, I have a couple people I'm, I'm thinking but about. But we haven't gotten to them yet? No, we I haven't think gotten, yeah. unless they change the rules this season, you get to pick two people for your fancy team and you have to do it before week one. Or no, no, you can pick, you can join any time. It's you can't pick your sole survivor pick 
after week one. You have to pick yes. before week one. You can't get so. any episode at all to guess who Soul Survivor is going to be. Yeah. Unless they change it this season. I haven't seen anything about that. So, all right. That's Rome. Who mm-hmm. is next? Next is Annika, age 26, uh, lives in Los Angeles, is a marketing manager. Oh, boy. California. All yeah. right. So, occupation marketing manager. Uh, we're not getting the whole white collar, blue collar thing. Most of these people are white collar. What else? Again, yeah. Like what second production. What else is new? <laughs> All right. Uh, what anything about Anika or, or uh, Annika? I Annika. could be saying it wrong. Annika, Anika. I don't know. What anything interesting um, besides inspiration being mom? I see that. Yes, her inspiration is her mom. Uh, I you know there wasn't that much on her that just stood out to me except for the fact that she loves to sing and she's tone deaf. Which honestly, that's like a pet peeve of mine. If you love to sing, like, and you know you're bad, just don't do it. Um, I love to sing, Mary. <laughs> Am I tone deaf? You are not tone deaf. Oh, no. interesting. Just bad. You're actually not bad. You pretend to be bad sometimes for a joke, but you're actually not that bad. <laughs> I think 90% of the singing I do in my free time is purposefully doing songs bad. Yes. Yeah. Which is super is that take a ta- Is that a talent to take a song that is good and then not do it bad on accident, but do it bad on purpose as a joke? I guess so. Interesting. Yeah, it's not America's a talent. America's next bad singer. Not a talent I would boast about. I wasn't until you mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. The other fun fact from Annika is that she said she's going to win because of small things like keeping camp clean. And I was just thinking, who's won? Ever won? Who's ever cared about that By, since like season that. 10? But yeah. So we'll <laughs> see. I mean, she had other things to say too, but that was just one of the things that stood out to me. Uh, Let's pull... Let's pull the. Uh, I'm gonna provide food for my tribe. Like nobody's cared yes. about that. Yeah, since. exactly. <laughs> In terms of like keeping you to the end, mm-hmm. not even. I mean, that was like Ozzy's whole thing, and even then, people are like, "Yeah, okay, I'm. I'll just starve." Right. Just, right. <laughs> especially with 26 days, I'll just starve. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. Unless your name is Liz, who, by the way, from 46, <laughs> posted the other day a picture of her eating a bourbon burger, and guess what, Mary? What? It had a bun. Wow. Not a lettuce bun. Wow. She had gluten. Allergy, eating a bun. You can have a gluten-free bun. You know that, right? No, I didn't know that. No, I don't know. Now I feel silly. I don't know if Applebee's has them or not. Uh, Was it? It's Applebee's, right? It was Applebee's. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm hoping Applebee's back in 47 and 48. Yeah. Yeah. And people with gluten can at times have it, just like not something you should do all the time. Is it kind of like being lactose intolerant where if you eat the thing that triggers your lactose tolerance you just gotta go take a massive dump i don't know is that how gluten no, allergies no idea, work honestly. somebody's and gonna I'm jump sure in the comments and be like, well, actually, yes please educate us well, we don't know. well actually all right all right well, anyways on. i saw the bun and i was like hmm, interesting so i didn't know <laughs> i didn't say anything till now now i feel silly <laughs> all right well okay who uh we, so we talked about annika or nika we'll learn her name if she's not first out and so, I mean, like, well, I guess we'll learn her name anyways, yes, but I'm well, saying that, like, it'll matter beyond a week. Right, see how long right. she lasts. Okay. All right. Who's next? Next is TK or Taryn is mm, his regular name. Age 31 from Maryland and is an athlete marketing manager. I think in your notes here, we have the sob story already written for we us. We do. We have What's a good sob story. What's the sob story for TK? So he was diagnosed with a kidney disease at a very young age mm-hmm. and it almost killed him. Yes. Um, in high school. This is a legit sob story, by the way. Yes. So I, I mean, haven't even heard it yet, but this is it. He he he's always beaten the odds. He said his dad was in prison when he was young. When he was very young, he was diagnosed with kidney disease. He always dreamed to be in the NFL, but of course he couldn't um, because of this disease. So didn't he just we, didn't. The person that we know that recently passed did they, they have kidney disease this past summer? I'm not going to say their name on the podcast, Mary. I don't know who you're talking the about. The person. I can't, I, can't, I can't say anything without indicating who it is. Yes. The um, person that passed. How many people do you know? How many people do we know, Mary, that passed away in this past like couple months? I literally have no idea. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Mary's like, this person means nothing <laughs> to me. You sound so evil. Oh. To be fair, we do not know them super well. We no. just know them like in passing. My so I don't want to make sure Mary sound evil. My goodness. It's somebody we know in passing. Uh, no, it was heart. They had. OK, heart. I thought they had a kidney disease. And I was like, oh, man. No, man, that really is killer. Wow. I mean, th- so if TK had kidney disease. You have to recover from that, right? Like, you can't just have kidney disease and live with I'm it. I'm sure he had a kidney like transplant. 
Yeah. Like he, they probably removed his kidneys and he got new kidneys. Or it's like you could only need one kidney anyways. But or maybe that. kidney disease is just in one Usually kidney. kidney disease. I mean, I have no idea. I'm not a doctor, but. What? I've, We're not I've doctors? Families who had kidney issues and usually like if it's in one, it's in the other. It just, it just oh, happens. That sucks. But. All right. Um, anyway. So yeah, he's overcome a lot in his life. Mentally, physically, emotionally. He's excited to play. Um, in your notes, I see he is a nerd. Did yes. you write that? Yes, I did. No, he put that. Oh. <laughs> he put that like, what's something that people won't know about you? I'm a nerd. Like from my, yeah. I'm an NFL athlete, but I love playing video games. Um, Who doesn't? Whatever. Exactly. I'm sure he's just saying he's a nerd. He loves anime, sci-fi, what a nerd. nature documentaries. Yeah. So, you know, you he know could me. be a nerd, but. I'm the epitome of cool, so I can call people nerds and it means something. It's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who's next? Well, I was just going to say this is oh. my first person on the fantasy league that I'm considering. Oh, TK's on your potential mm-hmm. roster. On my potential roster. Okay. We All don't right. want to give too much away because I, I mean, I, even though I cannot win my own prize. I still want to beat all of you. <laughs> I still want to kick all of your butts in the league. Well, like I, I last haven't... season I was sweating bullets when Bonnie got one out and I was like, and everything's riding on Kenzie. Thank goodness she won. Everything was riding on Kenzie. <laughs> yes. Oh, and week by week in the league, by the way, you do, you can make up. So if like both your people go out and your team, you can still potentially win. And this is how I got a lot of points was uh, you get like a certain number of points to put on people that you think will be voted out. You get like 10 points a week unless it's a double vote out and you get 20. So anyways, I would diversify my 10 points. I would talk about last season. How I'm like, I think I'm going to put this on. The, I think I'm going to do like half and half on these two people. Like I think one of them's going or I did like three through three or three through mm-hmm. four or whatever. That's how I, I got. So like every week I would nail the vote out. It just depends on how many points I put on them. But like I would diversify my points. So that's how I made up a lot of. So even though I lost Bonu. And Kenzie it wasn't actually getting me a lot of points till she won. I was able to pick up points by voting every week. So it's something you got to be on top of every week, too. Yes. Just like check in once a week and vote. So anyways, I just want to throw out there because a couple people last season, I saw them move up the rankings, too, and they were oh, they were picking the right people. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm not going mean, to. There's nothing on the line last season. Well, I did that, too. I just season. usually pick the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> I tried telling you, too. I'd be like, I don't know, Mary. <laughs> like, I'm like. I'm pretty sure Q has got to go at some point. You're like, oh, no, Q's fine. Oh, no. You kept saying that like every week. And it was a long time before he finally went. <laughs> I know. I was putting points on Q every week. I was like, this cannot make it to the end. There's no way. Yeah. I was right eventually. You eventually. were right eventually. eventually. It's true. All right. Who's next? Next, we have Tiana. Tiana. She's 27 from a city in Hawaii that I will not pronounce. It's I E A A. Oh, wait, I even said the wrong. I E A. I E A. It starts with an A. It starts with an A. I E A. Four letters. Four vowels. Would you believe me that I would? T- <laughs> and if I told you I graduated college with a bachelor's degree, I think I we're just even, getting back in podcasting mode. Yeah, yeah it has yeah. been. We have. We aside from our, we did do a podcast on South Pacific and One World. One of those is on YouTube. There is on Patreon. Uh, but I mean, even then, even then, like. It, that's a different mindset than this. This mm-hmm. is like we know we're in for another 13 weeks in a row. And right. For me, two podcasts a week. So you're right. It's like I'm getting my mind back into podcasting mode. Right. Like that was just like a temp. Like we had a three month break. My brain's out of it. Mm-hmm. Would you believe me, though, mm-hmm. that I still don't know how to say this name? Yeah, I, I have no idea. I, A-I-E-A. 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 It will never come up during the show, I'm sure. Probably but, not. But somebody will be like, well, actually, how you say it is. A-I-E-A. A-I-E-A. <laughs> All right. It's, anyways. anyways, Hawaii is the important part. Yes. Hawaii. All right. By the way, this is, I think this is our second person ever from Hawaii. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. I, I know, know for a fact we've had one person before is Gio. I just didn't know if we had anyone else in between Gio and Ty- Tiana. Tiana? Tiana is We will thinking, learn but... the, these people's names during the season. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So Tiana's 27. I might have said that. She's a flight attendant. I think hers was one of like the most wordy. <laughs> she loves Gabler. She does love Gabler. She wants to represent Hawaii. She's really um, she loves Gabler. She loves Gabler. I don't yes. know why more people don't like Gabler. He won mm-hmm. and then donated all of his money to yeah. charity. She said he was constantly networking, but knew when to take a back seat. He was one vote shy of a perfect game. Yeah, it's true. Donated all of his money. Everyone else has 
spent their money in ways you don't even know. You don't <laughs> even know what they've done with their money. Gabler gave it all away and then gave receipts on it. True. And people are still hate on Gabler. And I'm like, come on. He gave uh, all I think his money he's away. He's one of my favorite winners, honestly. Yeah. I mean, his story wasn't like nothing to write home sure. about. He was he went like underwater him, for half a season, as yeah. he calls it. But yeah, as I a like winner, like, I, I like Gabler as yeah. the character. Uh, his gameplay was, huh? So anyways, anyways, I see so many people dunking on him. Anyways, yeah. go ahead. She liked Gabler. Yes. Back to Tiana. Uh, she Gabler. said she'll find a thousand idols if she has to. Ooh. She is here to win and play. A thousand idols. A thousand idols. Survivor. She, <laughs> she doesn't find Survivor one, like, Island of the Thousand <laughs> Idols. It's almost like, isn't that like a dressing? Thousand Island a thousand dressing? Thousand Island yeah. dressing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor sponsored by a Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> this season we have a thousand idols. Yeah. Anyways. Did you know Sammy was on Gabler's season? Who's Sammy? He was only 19 years Just old. Just kidding. Yep. And this year, he turns the age he joked about in 43. I know. It's going to happen, and I will have a post about it. Don't I worry. Know you All right. So anyways, she loves Gabler. She likes. A th- she wants to get find a thousand idols. Uh, not a great strategy, but a strategy I encourage everyone to do. Mm-hmm. Chaos. Yep. You might as a well thousand look. idols. A thousand all right, next is Rachel. She's 34. She's from Michigan and is a graphic designer. Uh, my fun facts about her were that she just recently started watching Survivor back in 2017, which I know isn't like that recent, but That's compared not- to compared to a lot of the new era contestants who are like, oh yeah, I grew up watching this show from when I was six years old and my you, parents been on TV. You I know? think everyone would be surprised by how many of these people did not watch start watching Survivor until the pandemic. Yeah, it's I mean, if you true. actually listen to interviews and stuff, like there's so many people who I didn't watch until the pandemic, which, by the way, is great. I'm not complaining. So the thing think that you're new and you started watching 2017, you only started watching year after Mary. True. I feel new sometimes, too, though. It's been since 2016, though, yeah. for you. Mary started watching her first season. Was, first season was Millennials versus Gen X. True. Mine was Australian see, Outback. See, we're just talking about like feeling old. 2017 feels like last year to me. At it was times. not. So I know. Nope. Anyway, she was born in Thailand and lived there till she was seven, but never spoke Thai, which I thought was interesting. That is how. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she was an army brat or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. How do you live in another country and not learn any of the language? I don't know. I was in Peru for like a few weeks and I, I mean, to be fair, I'd taken a bunch of Spanish. Did you know I got a bachelor's degree? It wasn't in Spanish though. No. I, got, I took Spanish <laughs> classes in high school and college and I... Like, I was like, oh, a lot of these words sound familiar. And I like learned them. I was in Peru. But uh, how do you live in Thailand? Maybe as a kid, maybe if you're like a little kid. But even then, you feel like you'd pick up the language. Well, that's what I'm saying. So her parents couldn't have been Thai. Yeah, no. Yeah, I see why, I right. see why you think army brat. Right. If you live in an army base too, or on a military base in general, mm-hmm. yeah, you would have English everywhere. I mean, I was in the Navy. I would but be, it's still I don't know. Fun I lived in Cuba and yeah. everything on the military base was in English. Right. Still fun, uh, but she brought that up because like she moved to America and it was a culture shock for her. So she had to kind of yeah. like learn how to relate to people in other cultures. Um, and then the other thing I thought was funny is she compared herself to Goldilocks. <laughs> she said she's not too weak and she's not too physical. She's not too smart. So it's just like she's, she's in the Kenzie. middle, I guess. Yeah. Perfect. No, I don't, I'm not saying Kenzie's perfect. But I'm saying like that's how you win. Yeah. She you said I, she said I'll ride the middle to victory. Yeah. So we'll I mean, see. It's- that is how it works in most seasons. That is seasons. how it works in a lot of most movies. seasons. Yeah. That's how it works. It's mm-hmm. not the most exciting of wins, but it is how the million dollars hits your bank account. True. So, all righty. Who's next? John Lovett. This is our celebrity of the our season. Our celebrity. We don't often have celebrities in the new era, for sure. This, but. Hmm, yeah, celebrity is a strong word. Usually it's like an NFL player or something like yeah. that. And I'm like, oh, I vaguely know who that is. And I well, watched the NFL. Right. So celebrity is relative, I guess. But yeah, anyways. again, because, well, I mean, him being a podcast is our other, we have another podcaster after this, but this is our second person who talks into a microphone for a living. Let's mm-hmm. put it that way. <laughs> Before he did that, though, he was a speech writer. And this is where, where I actually think, okay, like not famous, but definitely like a very cool job. Mm-hmm. And he, speech writing for politics. Right? Yeah, he's speech not writing like, for yeah. Obama. Right. So not like. Who, by the way. If you win a million dollars, it's only 600K <laughs> after Obama takes it. And John's yeah. probably to blame. Right. John is probably to John's blame. probably to blame. If I was on the island, I'd be like, you speech for Obama. <laughs> it's not even a million bucks. It's only 600 grand after Obama takes it. All right. Anyways, let's get Anyways. through our facts. Yeah. He's 42. He's from New York, lives in California, is a podcast host. 
his bio is one of my favorites because it's just so short and like poignant poignant i can't even say he that probably word. talks a lot and he doesn't like to write a lot well i just think he's hmm, to the point like he says a lot what am with i saying few words. speech writer yeah exactly yeah. he says a lot with few words so like something you would never know about him buzz aldrin almost punched him in the face like he knows what you want to hear. Name dropping as well as like mysterious. And I don't know. It's just funny. It made me laugh. Uh, his inspiration. This was one of the few that wasn't his mom. His inspiration was he said, I do love my family and friends, but I'm motivated by the people I hate. And then doesn't explain. Very political. It's like, Very political. Okay. <laughs> sounds good. Man, talk about what a season to put somebody who's like political like this during like this is the election season it's true for america obviously it's true like we're literally going to be voting on uh, i guess a new president it can't be biden again so a new president here in november so yeah <laughs> no matter what it's gonna be somebody new so talk about season like survivor did they put john lovett on the season on purpose i don't know I like don't on know. this season like knowing it's election i mean like yeah. obviously they cast him on purpose imagine if it was an accident like oh you happen to speech right speech right for obama didn't know that oh yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure probably was at least brought up a few times. I like to imagine people in charge making noise like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who's next? Next, we have Genevieve. She's I like that name. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just a cool name. Gen- cool Gen- Genevieve. Genevieve. Nice. Mm-hmm. It's an old fashioned fun From name. the middle of nowhere, Canada. Middle- I looked this one up on a map. Winnipeg? I've heard of Winnipeg. No, Winnipeg's nowhere. Okay, but it's like a big city. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought Manitoba was like the middle of nowhere. I thought... I thought it was not one of the main cities of Canada. I thought it was maybe well, like a... I'm like, sure Canada, big city. was a big city in Canada? Isn't that like a middle-sized city in America? Sure. So, sure. like, if you're from, like, know. a middle-sized city in Canada, isn't that, like, I mean, it's, any town in America? I'm just joking. You're right. It's no New York. Okay, How sorry. big? No, what's the population of 834,000. I take it back. That's pretty big. I know nothing about Canada. We need to go <laughs> visit and visit. We should visit. And by the way... I am open to suggestions. Post in the comments on where we should go in Canada. We, Mary and I have never been to Canada to get together. I mean, uh, together. Together. Yes. yes, together. I know you've been to Canada. I, I'm talking about I together. I was going to say it barely counted, but yeah. Yeah. I want suggestions. Where should we go in Canada? What should we see? What's the quintessential Canadian uh, visit when we go? Because I do want to go. Apparently Winnipeg is big. Yeah. So. Apparently. Oh, well, apparently. 134,000 anyway. people. I call it a small town. What do I know? Genevieve is a corporate lawyer. That was the last fact about her. Nice. All right. Um, fun facts. She applied the very first night that Canadians could apply for Survivor. So she was like super excited yeah. from the beginning. When 39 allowed it. Yeah. yeah. So she's been applying for six years, I think. And hey, since we started the podcast, basically. Yeah. yeah. Every year she's been applying. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really have anything else fun about her. She likes to play video games. She likes what? to play video games and is worried about saying that because she thinks she's too old to play video games. And I was like, three is not too old. No, no. I'm 35 and I still play. Video I mean, games. maybe like 10 years ago to say something like that. even then it's like, I feel like video games are so mainstream now. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like some quirky little niche thing or like only kids do it. Right. Like that. So. I will say I was uh, I, we didn't mention this. And I meant to mention it. Survivor CBS. It's time to post the cast. The first thing Survivor CBS is Instagram, Facebook, whatever posts about the cast is this. And I use this word sparingly. You never hear it in any videos. If you've ever heard, ever heard a podcast, you count on one hand. Cringy is the word I'm going to use. OK. Video of the cast doing like a like a football like I'm blah, blah, blah from this place. And it has oh, like the football music behind yeah. it. I'm like. This is how you introduce the cast to us. Like ugh. they're trying to attract the NFL audience. It was like, and it was just like done by like someone on social media. It wasn't like done by like the survivor team, like the editors. It wasn't sure. like something professionally made. It looks very much like somebody on YouTube made it. I say that somebody on YouTube. So yeah, exactly. I would know. <laughs> <laughs> looks like somebody. I don't mean it's, I don't, it just doesn't look very good. I'm like, this is how you introduce the cast. Like, come on now. Right. I hope the season's better than this video. I uh, Rebecca messaged it to me, and I said, like, I, I, what's most interesting to me is reading the comments. Because Mary, if you go and watch, check out the Survivor CBS uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever yeah. Twitter. I don't go on Twitter anymore. Whatever it's called now, X. Uh, if you check the comments, you'll always see Survivor players now. Now, they've always done this, but it's gotten more egregious since Jeff said 50 is going to be attorneys. Survivor players sucking up the oh. <laughs> survivor because they want to be in good graces to be on 50. 
Yeah. So it's it's gotten more interesting in the comments. Like uh, definitely flooded with Survivor players. In my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe statistically I'm wrong. But in my opinion, it looks more flooded than usual. Recently, I've noticed. Well, you've so. never been wrong before, so. Boy, don't say something like that. <laughs> Get me killed. <laughs> All right. Who are we talking about? Oh, G- G- Genevieve. Genevieve. I like Genevieve's name. All right. Ne- who's next? Next is Gabe. He's 26 from Baltimore. Oh, by the way, Genevieve is on my, not not like locked in, but Genevieve's one of the people I'm considering currently. So gotcha. I need to do more research and watch the preview against who's most prominent because yeah. that's really what I'm going to base my fantasy team picks on. Mm-hmm. But Genevieve, name alone. I'm interested. <laughs> name alone. All right. Gabe is next. Gabe is next. 26 from Baltimore and is a radio show host. Oh, I take it back. There are four people this season who talk into a microphone for a living. Wow. We haven't even gotten to the fourth part. This is not the person I thought. Bunch was. of talkers. Okay. But what do we know about talking? Mm-hmm. All right. Gabe from Baltimore, uh, Maryland. Yep. I think one of the fun facts I had about him is usually when they're asked, like, what player do you identify with most? Everyone always has somebody. They're usually like, oh, I don't really want to identify, Rob, but I will. Yeah. And this was like, no, I want to play like myself. I'm going to be myself. And I don't like, you know, I don't want to just be some the second whoever. Uh, so that was kind of fun. I, I think it's a good act, attitude to have, but also at the same time, like you're going to probably play like somebody. But anyways, uh, well, I he hope has... not. Q, who do Q play like? <laughs> exactly. I, I hope I That's you know we need more people who <clears throat> play like themselves. I'm with you. The other fun fact. Be your own is, person. This is because of me and who I am. He he has two cats and he has their names. I don't know how to say him. Kachi and Saba, I think. But he Mary loves and cats. I have three cats and a dog. Cats are the joy of his life. Yes. So one of my cats, the joy of my life. And this was one of the few people that didn't say their mom for their inspiration. He said it was his big brother. So oh, close, enough. <laughs> close <laughs> enough. Immediate family. There's no one else in life inspiring you. Did it was the question who in your immediate family is inspiring you? Because mom, big brother. I mean, like, unless he means the TV show, big brother. In that case, no. shame. No shame. I, by the way, I heard the season was very good. What? Are you shocked to hear A that? Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's watched three big brother seasons and all of them. I'm just like, I'm so Terrible. sorry for making you have for making you, you should watch be. This. <laughs> every time I'm like there's got to be a good season right and i've watched a couple but i'm like why would i make mary do this <laughs> anyway so gabe uh yeah hopefully his inspiration is his big brother and not the show big brother that's all i'm gonna say definitely his older brother oh good who's next next is kyle he's 31 from sheboygan, sheboygan. <laughs> i like the name sheboygan <laughs> i'm we're guessing i think it's sheboygan uh, he's currently a construction worker. It sounds like he's had an interesting life for sure. He is on my fantasy team just because I think he's going to be on TV a lot, just based on his personality. Mm. Um, mm. Get airtime. You don't a get lot. points from airtime, though. You get I points from making you moves and finding points. idols I and know, stuff. I know. Um, when I make the league, I'll have a link, obviously, to it on Patreon and whatever. And you can look at all the rules on there before you pick your team in terms of scoring. But I, I don't believe confessionals matters. So I agree with you, though. He's a big personality. He kind of gives me the Jelinski vibes. He does to me as well. But which is not good. Not, I mean, Jelinski's fun, but he's not good for your fantasy team. Right. That's, I, he's just on my consideration. Okay, I thought consider he was interesting. Him. OK, consider him. Let's talk about his interesting facts. Um, he traveled for six years in a van that he built himself. Like, I don't even know how you do that, but apparently people do that. You don't know how people build vans? Like, build a van by yourself? You don't have, like, I don't know. That just seems like you need a professional help to do that. I'm just, my mind's blown, okay? And he's eaten dinner from a dumpster with a hippie, but he's also been on million-dollar yachts. So, I don't know. He just sounds like he's had a very interesting life. Uh, his <laughs> This is one of the few people, again, not mom for inspiration. He is his own inspiration, because life handed him a disaster and he baked a brownie with it. And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, this guy just makes hey, me Yeah, I just made a brownie. I made, well, I made shortbread brownies today. Yes, you yeah. did. And they're delicious. Thank you. I thought they were pretty dang good. I, over the off season, people, uh, not, only, not only have I been losing weight, but I've also been baking. Seems counterintuitive, but <laughs> I've been baking. I've learned a lot about baking in the off season. <laughs> I hope that that impressed you somebody. Baking, again? baking yeah. <laughs> And I watch Great British Bake Off and I'm like, wow, these are incredibly hard things they're doing. <laughs> like more appreciation. All yes. right. And we watched another Netflix baking championship show and I'm like, appreciation. I'm like, it's really hard to do. I get it now. All righty. Who are we talking about? Kyle. Kyle, I would consider, but I, I think I'm going to, I personally am going to try to avoid big characters on my team. Mm, okay. Big characters. 
don't tend to win. And I'm looking for, I am trying to get winners on my team. I need a winner. I got Kenzie last season. She saved the day. She won. She's a winner. She won. I, there was something they were really promoting the crap out of that purple tribe. Mm, and I was true. like, oh, I'm going to pull people from purple tribe. I almost did Bono and Q, but I was like, that's sexist. So I picked Kenzie. <laughs> I'm being re- for real. That was my thought. I was like, well, it's a bit sexist not to have a girl on my team. <laughs> so I picked Kenzie. <laughs> so Kenzie got on just merely based on <laughs> merely <sex>. based on <laughs> me going, well, I don't want to be sexist. <laughs> Wow. And I picked who I thought was the best girl candidate. <laughs> the th- more you know. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> All right. Real so talk. Who's next? Next is Kishan. Yeah. I think. Age 28 from San Francisco, California. They He is an ER doctor. Um, The interesting fact of Kishan for me that I noticed was that he likes to do things spontaneously. So he did a last minute spontaneous solo trip to Guatemala. To That's hike pretty cool. A volcano. That's pretty cool. I mean, that takes like courage as well as money, free well, time, money. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess he's he an just, ER doctor. He has money. I don't he know, is I don't an ER doctor. Whatever. I don't know about the. That's what I'm saying. I think he just took off work. But anyways, go skydiving, joined a competitive team, all nice. spontaneously. He applied for Survivor on a whim. Wow. It's like one of those random people that's just like lucky and gets the things he wants i don't know well i well, can't say really. that if you're an ER doctor you have to work you for that. have you to work hard that. i'm not saying he got handed i'm just saying like you apply once for survivor and when i see someone who said it says bartender and they have a ton of money and i'm like mm, yeah are you a trust fund kid and they're just <laughs> <laughs> yes no i'm not saying that and, and that's another cool part of his story like his parents i don't think he went to college um he became the first doctor in his family he had to work three jobs at times or his parents had to work three jobs sorry so like no, he gets the value of hard work and and that's cool. I don't think that necessarily relates to Survivor, yeah. but being spontaneous can be beneficial for you. I, I will say he falls into the age range you're looking for for winner mm-hmm. picks. It just historically, winner picks are be- winner winners are between twenty five and thirty five on newbie seasons. Right. So anybody outside of those numbers, it's not impossible. Look at Marianne, she won. Look at Gabler, he won. But rule of thumb, between 25 and 35 is your best bet. Just the way they cast the seasons. People relate to people within their own age range. Heck, the whole fina- the whole final three of 45 was all 26. They were all 26 years old. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm just saying, uh, keep that in mind when picking because it could be definitely be a factor it's for true. your fantasy team. True, true. All right. Well, who's next? Next is Sam. Not Sam. Sammy, but Not Sammy. Sam. This and he guy is, is 24. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm a little worried. Can you imagine if they cast a guy named Sam who's 19 and like that was the storyline? I'm like, that's that's confusing. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, currently resides in Nashville, is originally from Illinois and is a sports reporter. I read that. I was like, clearly moved for the Titans. Clearly. Because they're in the Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I assume. Yeah. He's I an, assume. He's an NFL reporter. I assume. So. What else would it be in Nashville? He- Sam, I was considering until I saw 24. I stand by my rules of thumb. I don't just make them up. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, he's not, I'm not considering him for my fancy team. If he wins, I will eat my words as I lose, but, but that's whatever true. you should. <laughs> I should. Yeah. As well as I should. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Uh, well, well, sorry. We you more on Andy. I mean, I we, was didn't, we didn't, we didn't well, do any of this. Sam there wasn't very long. No, we didn't go. Well, I, we didn't talk <laughs> about it though. <laughs> so I'm a little sick. So I'm recovering from that. Well, that's why you did a loud cough. Uh, yeah. well, mm-hmm. Also, the loud cough is kind of like the bad singing. I do it on purpose to emphasize my point. Right, I know. I'm married you know to you. This. All right, cool. Anyway, Sam, uh, his interesting facts. I thought <laughs> I thought it was funny. He says, why do you want to be on Survivor? And he's mm-hmm. like, well, you know, childhood dream and also a million dollars. We're still talking about Sam. Sure. Yeah. We, we oh. have not talked about him yet. Oh, I thought we were moving on. All right. His profile is a little basic, which is why I didn't have much on him. He's an your NFL reporter basic. at 22. Why don't you talk about my mom? <laughs> I like your mom. She's cool. Okay. All right. Uh, next is Andy. Next is Andy. An actual person I'm considering for oh, my fancy team. I am not, but good Here's for you. Here's the thing. On paper, fills a, a, a fits a lot of things I'm looking for between 25 and 35. From mm-hmm. the Northeast. Eight people from the Northeast. Mm-hmm. They relate to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so Occupy, and, occupation, AI research assistant. He's in the know, you know, he's in the know. He's up to date. Why does that matter? I don't know. How is AI going to help you win Survivor? A- AI is the new thing. Imagine winning and being like, I do AI for a living. Survivor would be like, whoa, Survivor, you know, Survivor won't embrace AI until like 2035. And by then everybody's moved on to where the next fad is. But 
I'm not saying AI is going anywhere. It's just the current fad at the moment. Put yeah. AI and everything. Okay. Kind of, remember back in the late 2000s, early 2010s when everything was 3D mm -hmm. or you could buy glasses that were. I was just thinking about this the other day. I'm like, what happened to HD glasses that you could buy? Yeah. Remember they would do commercials and you'd be like, whoa, everything looks high definition now. And I'm like, what in the fridge are you talking about? <laughs> Your eyes are the top resolution you can get. And we don't work off resolution, obviously. We have eyeballs, not pixels. Mm -hmm. Point being is I was confused, and I still am to this day, about HD sunglasses and how they make life more high definition and whatever happened to them. I'm glad Andy could inspire you to 3D that rant. and high definition sunglasses are what I think about when I think about AI. They're, it's not going anywhere. I mean, HD sunglasses, I think, did. But, you know. Anyways, Andy's one of the people I'm considering just based on the age and the location, frankly. Frankly, what is throwing you off from Andy? Um, I I don't know. I just didn't connect that well with his bio, which well, happens Well, you're not sometimes. a 31-year-old male from Buffalo, New York, are you? It's true. But Buddy. like I tend to just have people on the, my team that like I get, and I don't know, I didn't quite get him. I didn't get Kenzie, but I got the win. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Anyways, I guess we move on from Andy. Hey, all right. <laughs> Minesweeper is his favorite hobby and biggest inspiration, yeah. maternal grandfather who served in World War One, which is kind of cool and this pretty next crazy. This person is not winning Survivor. No, this next person not winning Survivor, but I'm super excited about the yeah. next person, actually. Okay. So next is Sue, age 59. Enough right there to let me know. <laughs> but that's not true because Gabler won. But her personality seems more antagonistic based on what we have seen. Yes. I know I'm cutting you off. Mary, give me the cut her off signal. I'm sorry. I'm just excited to talk about the antagonism. Okay. She's from New York, Putnam Valley, New York, and is a flight school owner. And yes, she's already been in the promos. Um, she just like seems like such a, a BA. She and, wants to be a villain. Yes. Yeah, she does want to be a villain. She's decided to get out here and play. She's like ready to lie, ready to backstab, you know. she when When asked what she wants in an alliance member, she's like, why, that doesn't really matter, you know, because <laughs> all, alliances are temporary. I'm not really going to expect anything. <laughs> alliances are temporary. That million dollars in my bank accounts forever. Right. So, you know, like, I just feel like she's she's so motivated, like probably not as much as we would see from a 59 year old woman. So, I sure hope this energy continues in the actual show and is not just preseason hype. Yeah, me too. She's not winning if this energy is real. Well, no, because she'll be a target. As well as just being the oldest person on the tribe. It always makes you on a target. But really, the age is, is really the, how antagonistic she was coming out the gate. And I'm like, true. all right. Yes, that you're not is gonna win, true. But I like it. I like the energy. Mm -hmm. Keep it up. Well, you can be antagonistic in conventionals all you want. Yeah. But can you tone it down for the real? There's definitely a balance of antagonistic behavior because we saw it. You and I have been watching the Dark Ages survivors and I'm a survivor. And I'm like, mm, they definitely put antagonistic people in yeah. these seasons. It just was not the cast wasn't balanced well. Mm -hmm. to balance out you need you need both sides you need the heroes and the villains if you just cast a bunch of villains and i think what happened this is a, a small tangent they started with china i know china was like mostly villains but it kind of worked out i think they kind of like went harder into that especially with rut when russell showed up in season 19 mm -hmm. i think they just went overboard i think it's how the dark frankly i think russell it was the tipping point on what they were already doing and it sent them into the dark ages in terms of how they're casting. Just a theory. I have actually no idea. I've just been so deep into the dark ages on videos lately. I've been like, what went wrong? Right. Clearly, I think it was actually the casting of so many antagonistic people. You need some, but not too much. Right. They're going too hard in the villains. Too much of a so bad Sue thing is, a bad is somebody thing. I would have expected <laughs> in one of those seasons. But she's a breath of fresh air in seasons yeah. where now everyone <laughs> in the new era has to be a hero. It's true. Yep true so she should be fun to watch um i'm considering her a good for my Are team really? and i know i shouldn't because she's probably not gonna like really shouldn't. get idols or she might i don't know we'll see i just like her i'm excited to watch her i was originally considering the next person until this is one of the people i watched because i was so curious so let's move on from sue sure carolyn's the next person this person we had no idea what they looked like anything nothing about them when we talked about the rumored cast back during the summer and i was mm -hmm. like oh they're probably an old person Thankfully, that's what I was thinking at the time. I'm like, because we need more. And by old, I mean over 40, which in Survivor's ancient, apparently. Right. Just so dumb, but whatever. So, no, she's 27 from, Carolyn is 27 from Illinois. Or sorry, her hometown's California, but she lives in Illinois. And I watched her video and I'm like, oh no, she seems like somebody who's definitely on social media. 
how come we couldn't find her? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know. But it definitely was like the opposite of what I was expecting. I was expecting maybe somebody was like kind of Amish, maybe, mm-hmm. or you know, somebody's like living off the grid. Uh, based on the fact that it was like a super big struggle to find any pictures of her or any information on her at all. Like all we had was like a, a shot of her in the promo, like in the background. And I watched a video of her talking. This is one of the ones that I said tainted me. And I'm like, never mind. <laughs> so oh, no. I was like, at first I was considering for my fans team. And I watched the video. I was like, mm, never mind. I was like, oh, I need to stop because it's already tainting what I was gonna, picks I was going to make. I wasn't going to pick her. Uh, I'm saying well, like it was a possibility and it got thrown out the window the moment I watched her gotcha. video. I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> well, don't taint the rest of us. I'm not trying to. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> it tainted me. I'm tainted. All right. And what do you have on, on Carolyn? Caroline. Uh, Caroline. Sweet Caroline. Caroline. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, it's Caroline. Oh. Um, she flew to Chile to backpack. Nice. That's cool. What's all these rich people just going <laughs> to countries on a whim? She uh, hosts amazing race themed scavenger hunts, which hey, I thought would be really fun to do. That would that does sound amazing race underrated show. Yeah. Underrated show. We'll next season's it. gonna be in the spring. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Next we. Oh, have- nothing else on her, huh? <laughs> No. Okay, I thought we had more. Okay, go ahead. Next we One have, of her inspirations was her mom. Oh, well, yeah. I'm I'm not talking about <laughs> that's to, just assumed. If it's not, point. if I don't mention it, then it's their mom. Yeah. This next person, ignore the occupation. Uh, that is her occupation. Okay. She is a podcaster for Rob as a podcast. Oh uh, go ahead. Gotcha. Asia from 32. From 32. Wow. Age 32 from Houston, Texas. Yes. Occupation, IT consultant. But slash in her free time. Podcaster. Time. Yes. Gotcha. So four people who mm-hmm. maybe she doesn't get paid. I, I, I don't know if everyone on, I don't think everyone on Robert's podcast gets paid. What do I know? We're just the second biggest podcast on YouTube. We're not number one. Right. Okay. We're number one in your hearts, but we're number two on the charts. Keep that we in mind. Robert's podcast hearts. is number one. We are not going with the <laughs> new million hearts approach. No, no. we have a million hearts. Uh, okay. We have 82,000 subscribers. <laughs> we have almost a million hearts. <laughs> we are not even close. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Asia Welch, I believe it's how you say it. This is one of the ones I went and checked the video because I'm like, okay, I got corrected on her name because we said what we were saying. I believe before I was saying Aisha. Just Probably. I, I, I mean, just the way it was reading to me. But no, it's actually Asia. Watch the video. That's one of the ones that tainted me. This is a good tainting. This is not a bad tainting. Mm-hmm. When I watched your video. So. Anyways, uh, this is one of the people I'm considering, though I I get a little worried mm-hmm. when I hear somebody's a podcaster or off as a podcast and not because of that necessarily more so like, you know, too much. You right. might be too in your own head. Yeah. You might, you know, like, you know, too much. Mm-hmm. That's all I think. I'm like, if I was there, I know too much. I would True. be in my head. True. Also, I'm I would not be the best socially, let alone. <laughs> I need Mary on the island with an earpiece in one of her ears and I can feed her strategy when she when she needs it. Oh, so I would play and you just you guide would play. Me, I see. Yes, you have okay. an earpiece in, and I when you turn it on when you want strategy, turn it off when you need to stop <laughs> listening to me talk. Because trust me, you would need an off switch. Yes, yes. Yeah. Why can't we have that now? That Anyways, sounds ridiculously on. cheating for me to All be right. able to feed you information. For Asia, yeah, I did like her energy. I was also considering putting her on my team. Um, she seems like a go getter. She bought her first house on her own at twenty nine, which not a lot of people do. You know, just like Oof, that's, that's like a lot of pressure. You by know? yourself, yeah. By yourself. But anyways, and I really Maybe like Rob has <laughs> podcast does pay. Oh, what I was getting at is I don't know if they pay everyone who podcasts oh, for them. Gotcha. I know like the top dogs. I, I'm pretty sure I do not know any information beyond what I assume. I assume mm-hmm. the top dogs get paid, but I don't know if everyone does. I don't know if she's one of them. That's what I was trying to say. The other thing I liked about her was that she has two dogs and they're pepper and cinnamon and she calls them her spice girls. And I thought that was super hilarious. Yeah. Loved it. So, yeah, I just liked her energy. She trained for this. She said she lost 10 pounds. Um, and wow. Well, 10 pounds of fat and gained five pounds of muscle. Preparing. How do you know that? It's in her bio. No, no, no. I mean, like, how does she know she lost 10 pounds of fat and gained well, five pounds of muscle? Is when there you work to measure out, that? you yeah. typically lose fat. You don't okay. lose muscle. And well, that's what I've been doing. She gained weight during oh. the workout. So, yeah. yeah. So, if I start like, putting on some weight, you're going to be like, oh, wow, Wesley, muscle. No, as long as you can tell when it's muscle. I have lost. Well, I assume I assume every pound I've lost of ours fat then. And I've. Yes. What if I put on muscle? I didn't even know. I have been working out. You probably put on. I've a lost bit. 44 pounds for those. You wondering. probably put on. A little and bit. that's what slowed me down a little bit. Yeah. Usually when you hit a plateau, I'm, it's something of that effect. It's probably all the muscle I've been putting on. Probably. Yeah. Anyways. Is that why you've been eyeballing me lately more often? The, yeah. All the muscle I've been putting on. Mm hmm. 
Anyways, let's not make this up. Mary is my wife, in case I didn't make that clear. All right. Moving on. We have Sierra, age 27, lives in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Phoenixville, yeah. I have a lot of questions here. Sierra is one of the people I'm considering. Really? Um, well, again, don't want to be sexist. So sure. I got to consider women and men, all right? Okay. I learned the lesson last season and okay. it worked out. Don't mm-hmm. be sexist when picking mm-hmm. your team. Uh, I liked how she completed her nursing degree really fast, so she's smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Irish step dancer for 10 years sounds like a fun thing. Yeah. I'm reading through the things you wrote down. Mm-hmm. From Pennsylvania, the Northeast, within our age bracket. True. And historically, her name means one thing and one thing only. Mm-hmm. She is willing to vote out her own mother. Not spelled the same, but it's oh pronounced the same. And that's what matters You're to me. You're just excited that her name's Sierra. She voted out her own mom, Mary. Mm, yes. It's a war crime yes. in some countries to do that. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, yes. Sierra voted her home. <laughs> I love the fact that Sierra inadvertently is going to allow me to make that joke. If she stays in the game long enough, does things that I somehow connect. Right. I'll figure it out. Thank you, Sierra, for that. Uh, anyways, what do you think about Sierra? Uh, I think she's going to be like a fun personality on the show. She's athletic. She's smart. Um, she, I don't, you know, I have no idea how, like her people skills or anything yet. But she did. Her bio was also one of the longer ones, as far as she's pretty talkative. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think that she definitely like knows a lot about herself and what she's capable of. I mean, you can't like become a nurse in seventeen months without putting a lot of effort and work into it. And, anyways, yeah, I, I think she's interesting. She wasn't one I was considering for my team, but we'll see. I am considering her now. I. As I said, like people I'm considering here, I'm not like locked in on. So mm-hmm. if you see my fantasy team and it's not these people, because I went back and watched the, pre- I'm going to watch that preview again and see who was prominent. Though again, it wasn't, it was made during the season. So I don't know. Like it's not, it's like when you watch the 46 ones, like, oof, you know, like that is actually a lot of information, but right. boy, I don't know, 47. All right. So who's our last, I know we got one more player left. Our who's our last player? player is Solomon, aka Saul. He is 43. Or is it soul? It's soul. Well, when I saw his pun, I thought maybe it was soul. I don't know. It is. Well, you're right. It is soul. I I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Um, He currently lives in Connecticut. He is a medical device sales. I literally laughed out loud when I was reading his bio. It's not, again, not very long. All of his answers are very short and concise, but they're all, most of them are pretty witty. He answered one of them like I would. Was the accomplishment you're most proud of? Take a look at my wife. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. But not his wife, my wife. For my accomplishment, obviously. Yes. It'd be weird if I was claiming my accomplishment as his wife. Oof. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different... That's a can of worms. Yep. We don't open cans of worms. Yes, we do. But not this can of worms. <laughs> so we don't open a can of worms here. Yes, we do. All the time. All the time. All the time. I didn't even know worms came, came in a can. I assume they do, based on that phrase. When I go fishing, I don't buy cans of worms. Somebody containers, but not cans. Yeah, I don't know. Imagine being worms in a can, then you can them. Don't they die? Well, they would die immediately. I want well, living yeah. worms on my hook. You don't need living worms all the time. I want living worms on my hook. I don't want dead worms. Okay. So Just getting back you my to fishing soul. techniques. Um, yeah, and then his pun at the end of his Thing. Why is he going to be the sole survivor? He has more than willpower. He has soul power. And yeah. What was he which is why his... I said it can't, probably isn't Saul as his nickname. Yeah. Soul. Saul power doesn't make sense, but soul power does. Soul yeah. does. Um, also, death is his inspiration. So that was, <laughs> I mean, I, I am rephrasing it slightly, yeah. but basically is, you know, to answer the question, who's your biggest inspiration? He goes, this will all come to an end. Life will come to an end. So you might as well just like, live life kind perspective. of perspective it's perspective which yes. is true so i mean just a very different bio than everyone else and so i'm immediately intrigued i feel like after you do this a while and you read a bunch of people's bios they're like especially for survivor they're all kind of copy and paste they all are kind of similar have yeah. similar thoughts that this guy's no he's gonna be different so this i could there could be really good for him or not because you know he's older already is he gonna connect with people yeah. I don't know, but I, I like him. That answer laugh. alone, though, I mean, like the jokes or whatever. People do jokes in their bios. But yeah, like thinking like death's your inspiration in terms of like, OK. It's perspective. And yes. Mary and I have talked about that in the past few months, too. On a serious note, like perspective, like like we get down on ourselves. but It's like. Like perspective, mm-hmm. like perspective, like it's like think outside of our little world, you know, right. our, our little bubble. Everyone has their little bubble they live in to an extent. So 
All right, let's move on to people's questions. There weren't a ton of them, but we got some. I asked for them on YouTube. Now, during the season, of course, there will be hundreds, but hundreds. today, not hundreds, Maybe just a millions. few. Maybe millions. <laughs> every every uh, episode at, after it ends, I'll post on our community tab for you all to give us questions. All right, so first one is, let's see. Uh, an, well, this isn't a question, but I... Since it's not officially released, I but I'm 99% sure of this one. Sarah says, another three tribe season? The answer is yes. As far as I am aware, I'd be... I mean, the preview, I think, showed three tribes. So, three tribes, yes. yes. That was, that was, where's Jelinski? Someone else asked. Oliver asked, where's <laughs> Jelinski? It's a good question. Uh, we have not once, I'm surprised, in this whole podcast, said Survivor 40 several. I feel like the joke would get really old if I did that. But yeah, where's Jelinski? And people are like, Survivor 50? I don't know. I don't think uh, they're going to do a first boot. Probably not. They've only ever brought back one first boot for in Caramo, and, and you haven't seen that one yet. They yeah. brought back Francesca from Redemption Island, Mary. Wait. I mean, they could, but obviously nobody's invested because they're the first boot. So, you know, not, well, a, lot, not a lot of hype. I mean, Jelinski was talked about for the almost the remainder of 47. Sure. I mean, I mean, he's like the exception. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah. we don't have a bunch of Jelinskis out there. No, him and Reem. The only two I can think of where they got like screen time beyond their initial episode. Oh, yeah. All right. Next question is from the Aki plant. I wish I knew why they were obsessed with doing three tribes. And I think the answer is the Aki plant is the three tribes. Jeff has gone on and on. Whether you agree with him or not, he's gone on and on. That's more dangerous. You can't hide in a three player or uh, three tribes because they're smaller. And that's why I was saying, well, let's get super dangerous. Let's do four tribes. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Let's get super dangerous. (laughs) <laughs> four tribes and we'll have a couple of uh double try like two tribe losses in the pre-merge because mm. we got 20 players instead of 18 and we got to cut it down a little bit faster yeah two only two tribes are going tribal tonight yeah why not why not <laughs> four tribes let's do it let's Live make it more dangerous let's get even more dangerous five tribes oh my gosh six tribes why not jeff let's make it dangerous <laughs> six tribes of three jeff all right uh Next question is from Patrick. Do you think Rome would make a great replacement host if Jeff decides to retire? No. Mm-hmm. I want the host replacement to not be somebody who played on Survivor, to be frank. Yes. We've watched other shows where I'm like, I've been actually surprised. We watched some other shows and I'm like surprised by the host. I'm like, I've seen them in other things and I, I don't want to get specific on who, but we've seen them. I'm like, I would not have thought of them as a host, but now they see them as a host. I'm like, yeah, no, this works out. I don't want to see a Survivor player. I feel like I want somebody who's not going to just suck up to production. And be like, well, when I played on Survivor, I don't want to hear that come out of their mouth. Right. I want the host to be like us. The host supposed to be like the surrogate for us, asking questions that we would ask. If you somebody who's played in the game, they're going to be like, I understand because I played in the game. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, when I play, I don't want to hear it like that. I can't relate to somebody who's been in the game. Right. Most of us can't relate right. to people who've played in the game. We need a host who is a basically a surrogate for us. I mean, I feel like you should have some separation from the game, too. Like, you yeah. are the host. You, you shouldn't be on the same page as the players. I don't know. Yeah. You're supposed to be asking questions and like, sure you get it. Cause you've watched the show and Jeff's pretty good about that. Like, you know, we've seen enough survivor where like sometimes things are pretty clear. Like obviously there's a division here of, of these groups, but Jeff doesn't like, he doesn't understand the way we, you know, the way the players do the dynamics. Right. And that's, he's supposed to be like our placeholder to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Like that's his job. Right. And, and so anyone replacing him needs to be, Kind of like that. We're like, they don't fully know. Right. So they're asking questions. So we need a host to ask questions. And mm-hmm. if I get a host who is like Boston Rob, who thinks he knows everything, right. you know, I don't right. want that. I, Boston Rob's a well, cool player and all and stuff. But like, so yeah, so. yeah. I don't need advice from the host unless the host is saying like the very basics. Like, well, it seems like there's a minority, tri- uh, you know, like there's a majority tribe and everybody else is kind of like scattered. Why don't you guys get together? Like occasionally mm-hmm. Jeff says that, but like it's not often. Like whatever he says needs to be like saying the very obvious or asking questions, but definitely not, you know, like a super player or somebody who's played. I don't know. I just don't want anybody who's played before as right. a host. In my opinion, it, taking this question at face value, I think it was just a joke because Rome put in his profile and we don't know anything about Rome. True. Yeah. So anyways, that's all the questions. So we only had a few, but yeah, we look forward to the season it starts in two weeks. Oh boy. Links in the description for Patreon to sign up for the uh, fantasy league. And if you want to, Watch everything we make early and get these podcasts ad free. I forgot to mention that podcasts will be ad free on Patreon as always. All right. Well, we thank you all for listening. We'll see you all in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye.